YouTube and welcome to my book nook. We are If you don't know me, my name's Rani. I read all different types of books, primarily fantasy romance. If you're interested in that, like and subscribe, all of the things. Today's video is going to be a very brutal unhaul. Why? Because uh, I bought another shelf, right? And figured that would eliminate all of my extra book problems. I have a million and one books up there. And the problem is, I want to be able to actually read all the books on my shelves. Um, that is a problem that I've set for myself. And I have way too many books to do so. But like, I don't care about having a lot of books. However, there are a lot of books on my shelves that don't belong on my shelves because I'm never going to read them. And every time that I go to unhaul them, I go, oh, I'm going to read this book eventually. I'm going to get to it eventually. But am I going to get to it? Plus, the whole real reason I'm doing this vlog is because there is a uh, deal going on at my second and Charles store right now where you get books you get an up get up to five books for a penny a page and I was like okay well what if I didn't have to spend any of my own money and I could unhaul books get money for it and then get you know like five books for like less than ten dollars possibly or not less than ten but like about twenty and so that's why I'm doing this so I can go to the bookstore and you know treat myself because I've only bought two three books in August three and one, two were book boxes that already were happening, and one is one that I bought on my own. And that is a significant jump for Rainy compared to buying a lot of books a month. And so I figured I could treat myself. The time is right. So I'm going to be brutal. And if there's any books in this haul that you think Rainy desperately needs to save, you should let a girl know. Although, probably by the time you're watching this, I will have unhauled them already. Uh, but I can always just get them again. It's not the end of the world. So I'm not above that. But with this, let's see what books we're going to be unhauling. You're going to be surprised that I'm actually getting rid of a special edition book. However, this is Under the Stars by Laura Pavlov. It is literally book number two in a series. Book number two in a series that I've never read and I have a random special edition of it. And I'm sure, and it is very beautiful, but I don't know when the heck I'm going to read this because I'm not in a contemporary romance era and it's book number two, which I don't understand why book boxes do this and they do like the second or third book in a series and they don't do the rest. I don't understand that and I never will. It even comes with like some art print, which I will keep in the book for people. Uh, but someone on Pango is going to be very happy to own this and so I'm going to get rid of this. I feel like my mom is going to hate me for this, but you know what? There's a reason. There's a reason that we're getting rid of this and we're getting rid of the entire Cinder series. And yes, these are the old covers. However, the problem is, uh, yes, I could still get these covers if I really absolutely wanted. And actually, I might just keep Cinder. In fact, I probably will. I will keep Cinder. But I don't need the other ones because I don't know that I'm going to love it. They don't all match. Like, this is a different... Like this is matte and this is not. Um, and then this one doesn't match. And then this is hardcover. And so if I'm going to get the whole series, then I'm going to want them to match. And I would have preferred them all to be hardcover, but they're not. And it honestly bothers me that they don't all match. We're going to keep good book one because it's in good condition. And that way I can still tell my mom that, you know, I'm trying out the series. But like, am I really going to love this series so much that I'm going to just want to continue on? Probably not because uh, it's YA. And so Let's get rid of three of these books. The next two are controversial, and I don't know whether I'm going to get rid of them or not, but I did try to start reading it, and I just didn't really care for it, which makes me think I should get rid of both. And that would be Vicious and Vengeful by B.E. Schwab. And the only reason, first off, they don't even match. And the only reason that I picked up Vengeful, which the sticker that won't come off is annoying me, is because it was a signed copy. I thought that was really cool. But I tried reading this for the Get a Clue Readathon and I got like 40 pages in and I just did not care what was going on. And I think I've realized I just don't like V.E. Schwab's writing. In fact, the only book that has worked for me of V.E. Schwab is A Darker Shade of Magic and I loved that book, but I hate book two. And so like I haven't finished it. And so like I'm gonna finish that series. And like I did buy that series like online, like because I know the old covers are gone. So like I probably will keep that. But it's just like I don't ever see myself itching to pick this up. And so I think I just need to get rid of the series and accept the fact that I'm not a V.E. Schwab girly, but not everybody is. So goodbye to that. Okay, the next one I've been keeping because like I've heard really good stuff about it and it looks very cute, but like it's a YA book and I just don't know when I'm ever going to read it. And that is Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas. Like it is a Peter Pan retelling. And so of course that made me interested. Okay. But like, I just don't read a lot of YA and I keep sitting it on my shelves. I don't know when I'm ever going to pick it up. Like I'm sure it's probably good, but it's just really not for me anymore. And then I'm getting rid of The Beautiful by Renee Audier only because I only own book number one and I'm sure it would probably be good. But everyone and their mother says the last book is so bad and that she literally ruined the entire series with the last book. Like I like I'm pretty sure it's really badly ranked. In fact, I'm gonna go look and see 
what it's ranked right now. I don't remember what it's called, so we'll look up the first one. Okay, the beautiful. Like, this has a 3.66, which is all right. The last one, the ruined, a three. A three, guys. A three. Do I really want to read a series that the last book is a three? Uh, no, I don't. And so, you know what? I'm just going to save myself a lot of heartache and get rid of it while I'm ahead. I feel like people are going to hate me for getting rid of this, but I just never see myself reading this because I'm not a big contemporary romance girly anymore. And so if I'm going to keep a contemporary romance, it really has to suck me in. And this one just hasn't. And that is The Charm Offensive by Alison Cochran. I know this is beloved. I know people are probably saying, Rainy, no, you should keep that. But I literally never see myself picking this up. I never see myself picking this up. Okay. Uh, so I'm sorry if this is your favorite book. But I would love someone to own it that actually will respect it for what it is doing. Okay, the next one. I don't know why I'm keeping this book. I don't, I don't know why I'm doing it. And so I'm finally deciding to get rid of it because I hated the other books by them. And that is Conversations with Friends uh, by Sally Rooney. And I do have another book by Sally Rooney somewhere that I will be getting rid of. But I absolutely hated the other book I read, Normal People. And I know people have said like, watch the show and then read the book again and you'll appreciate it. But like, I don't wish to do that to myself. And so I don't know why I keep holding on to this book, assuming that I will like her other books. I'll, like Sally Rooney does not work for me. And I don't care to try again. I'm sure that it's not going to be any different than it was. And I'm pretty sure she still does not do uh, quotations in any of her books. Yeah, she doesn't. I don't understand why. So this needs to go away. All right, I'm throwing away some others that people will probably have problems with me getting rid of. I'm getting rid of In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. I wanted to read this forever ago. And then I have not really heard any of my friends say that this is exceptional. And then I tried reading another Rebecca Searle, I think The Dinner List, and I didn't particularly love it. And I have no interest in picking up her expiration dates book. I just feel like these are not books that are necessarily for me. And I do know that a lot of people like this one, but I don't know. I just don't ever see myself picking this up and I need to be realistic with myself and the people the only books that need to be on my shelves are ones that I actually see myself enjoying although this is a very short book no no you don't need it but you know what I'm gonna put it here it's gonna be a maybe I'll decide at the end however one that I need to get rid of and I need to find the other copy wherever it is is things we left behind I'm also gonna get rid of the things we never got over and the one in the middle because I read the first book and it's fine. It was like a 3.5 star. And then I tried to read the second one and I absolutely hated it. I DNF'd it at like 30% in. I could not get with that book. I did not care. And so then it's like, okay, like I, I could maybe like this, but like why am I going to force myself to keep a series on my shelves that I don't want to force myself to read? Because uh, I don't have time to force myself to read books that I don't like. And Lucy Score just isn't really an author for me. And I'm never going to be trying to read the romance like category again for Goodreads because I've learned like that's not where my heart lies. So I I should just get rid of it. So I'm getting rid of this one. I'm getting rid of all three books in the series, but I'm going to hold up this one for now. And then when I find the other ones, I'll add them to the pile. But we're going to say goodbye to this series. Okay, I'm being very brutal in the romance field, but you know what? It's fine because I should only keep books on my shelves that I know are going to be appreciated. So next we're going to get rid of Kiss Her Once For Me by Alison Cochran. And I know I've heard this is a very fun Christmas rom-com, but I don't actually really enjoy Christmas romances. I've never actually really loved one other than one that I read a couple years ago that a lot of people didn't like. But like, I just, I just don't care. I just, I don't see myself reading this. I don't reach for Christmas stuff at Christmas time. And so, you know what? We just need to get rid of it because it's never gonna be read. And I'm sorry if it is a beautiful book, but uh, it's not a beautiful book for Rainy. We're also getting rid of The True Love Experiment by Christina Lauren and probably this, the one that comes before this. I can't remember what it's called. Uh, literally can't remember the name of the other book that's in this series. I also wanted to get rid of The Unhoneymooners, but I'm going to keep that one. I do want to read that, but I don't know. I just, I just don't feel the need to read these anymore. Like, I just don't care. I don't know how else to say that I've discovered I don't what I like and what I don't like anymore. And I feel like people are going to say, oh, but you're going to go back to contemporary romance one day. And you're so right. But like, I have books on my shelves that I'm keeping. Like, I'm keeping a lot of contemporary romance. I'm just getting rid of ones that like don't spark joy. And Christina Lauren has been a very miss author for me. Like, I liked her Christmas romance in holidays. It was okay. But I didn't like something wilder. And I didn't like, there was another book I read by her that I didn't necessarily love. So like, she's just whatever to me. So yeah, I'm getting rid of those. The next few I'm getting rid of because I heard Riley Marie say they were not very good. If we're being honest, I don't really know why I bought them because like I like a mafia romance, but I think it's really more that I like 
Sophie Lark and I like uh, Rita Kent but I don't really care for other ones and so I'm getting rid of Mafia Mistress and Mafia Darling by Mila Finelli because I just don't ever see myself reading these as much anymore like I don't know and Riley literally said these were awful and that the main character is really mean the main MMC is mean to the girl and so like I don't know although this is interesting I met the devil the morning after my 18th birthday that also was like 18 I don't know I don't I don't I don't want to do that yeah no no I I'm good also they're to somebody else this one literally says to Brianna ciao bella grazie from Fausto so they were somebody else's books first. And then we're also getting rid of Damaged Goods by LJ Shen, which this did come with an art print and things, but I don't know where any of that went. So I'm honestly just going to be selling the book. Uh, it's very pretty. Like, I like the cover of it and all, but I've realized that it is book four in this series by LJ Shen. And I don't know when I see myself reading the book that, you know, the other books before this. So might as well get rid of it because it's just going to sit there sitting pretty doing nothing. Next one we're going to get rid of, I didn't even realize I owned. Uh, I forgot that I bought it, but I just don't, it sounds like a cozy time that's not going to be for me. And that's Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. It does say Jane Eyre gets a dose of Dexter. And so like, it literally says, it's a reimagining of Jane Eyre as a gutsy heroic serial killer, which normally I would be down with but like that's gonna be like a historical mystery type thing and I just don't think I'm going to appreciate it the way that I would have liked to it's kind of giving me like uh what is it a curious beginning vibes which I'm not really for uh but yeah I just you know I don't need to read this so someone else will appreciate this I'm sure way more than I will. Another book that I don't see myself reaching for soon because I just thought it was all right and luckily I didn't spend a lot of money on it. I was supposed to read it for like one of Cassidy's book clubs and I just didn't get to it. It's The Girl in the Stars by Mark Lawrence. I don't know when I see myself reading this but I didn't particularly think it was that interesting so I'm not that sad about it. Plus I hate having mass market paperbacks so if I'm gonna have one on my shelves and I'm not gonna read it might as well just go away. So I have a very funny relationship with this next book. I'm getting rid of Guild by Raven Kennedy because I, okay, I originally had the paperback, but I had the indie paperback and so it was like all glossy and then, you know, uh, she got traditionally picked up and so they stopped selling those. I couldn't find them anywhere and they didn't match. So then I decided I wanted the hardcover anyway because this is really pretty and I like it. However, the new paperbacks that have come out, I enjoy a lot more and these ones all look exactly the same. Like all the books look the same and I honestly actually don't really like this bright yellow. It's kind of ugly now the more that I look at it. And so it's very funny. I owned the paperback. I owned the hardback. Now, and now I'm going to go back to the paperback and get the entire series because I do want to read this series, but I don't necessarily want to own this edition of it. So Third time's the charm, right? Next one I'm getting rid of is As Old as Time by Liz Braz Braswell. I don't know why I ever thought I was going to like these books, but like they're just YA little Disney books. I had like a moment where I thought I was going to be like a Disney books girly and like that's not me. Plus I know that my mom will want this, but these are all like villain books like told from the uh, the villain's perspective. Like what if Belle's mother cursed the beast instead? So like yeah. I'm sure my mom will say that she wants to get this because she's gonna end up looking at all of these first and deciding what she wants before I can actually sell any of these. But we're getting rid of this. Okay the next one I actually picked up recently but I don't know why I did it. I think it was because people like talk so well about this book and it's rated very long but like this is just not a book that I am ever going to read that I'm ever going to like if we're being honest. And that is The Lies of Locke Lamora by Scott Lynch. I it's like a historical fantasy. I'm not gonna like this. I don't know why I even picked this up. A great swashbuckling yarn of a novel. That is not a rainy book. Like this is not rainy coded. Uh, no, I don't. No, no. I'm also probably going to be getting of Dragon Fruit by Micaiah Lucier because every person that I know that has read this book has given it a three or a 3.5, which is not really that promising. Also, I don't know why it bothers me that the font is that big, but I don't know. That kind of bothers me. Uh, not that I should be getting rid of a book because of that, but like everyone's saying that like it was just all right. Like it's nothing to write about, home about, and I don't see myself picking it up anytime soon. So I don't really need it. Another one that I'm gonna get rid of that like in retrospect sounded really good but I just have not heard the best things about it and I don't really know if I really want to read it anymore. It's The Book of Gothel by Mary McMine. Like it sounded like a fun time when I picked it up and it has deckled edges which I absolutely love and it's like a Rapunzel retelling but I've heard it's kind of a little more historical than I would like and that it's just not as good as I was hoping. Although I'm going to put this in the maybe pile and I will make an ultimate decision on it at the end, but I don't really know. 
And then there's two other books that I want to get rid of only because they're more magical realism and I'm not a magical realism girly and I probably haven't told that I'm not going to necessarily love them and that would be Spells for Forgetting and the Unmaking of June Farrow by Adrian Young. I just don't ever all of these books. I don't ever see myself itching to pick these up. And I'm sure that these are good books. I know that Brittany absolutely loved Spells for Forgetting and I don't know if she read this one or not, but they just don't sound like they're mine. Like this one is like about a mysterious curse that's plagued their family farm, like their flower farm. I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't. Uh, no, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to like them. Another one that I'm getting rid of because I've only been holding on to it because it's the Illumicrate special edition and it is pretty, but like literally nobody likes this book. And that's Book of Night by Holly Black. Like I don't know why I'm holding on to this when I'm never going to read it because it has a very bad rating on Goodreads. In fact, it actually has a, okay, a 3.5. That's actually not as bad as I was expecting. But all of my friends say it is three star, two star, three star, three star, two star, three star, like the one star. So I don't know why I would try to read this book if it didn't go very well. Uh, so yeah, I'm not gonna read this and I'm sure somebody will like to own this. So I will get rid of it. And then I'm also getting rid of The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. One, I hate this cover. I actually like the other cover of this. I think the UK edition. So if I ever get this again, I will get the UK edition. Uh, two, everyone says that this is very purple prosy and not good. Now, I like a good purple prose moment because I absolutely loved When the Moon Hatched. However, is this going to be the one for me? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But like, if I want to own this, I want the prettier cover because I just don't like this cover. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, it starts interesting. There is a pirate in the basement. The pirate is a metaphor, but also still a person. The basement could rightly be considered a dungeon. The pirate was placed here for numerous acts of piracy nature considered criminal enough for punishment by those non-pirates who decide such things. Someone said throw away the key, but the key rests on a tarnished ring on a hook that hangs on the wall nearby. Uh, you know... I don't know. I don't... I don't know. I think we're gonna get rid of this edition is what I've decided. Another one that... I'm gonna put in the maybe pile of getting rid of is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. Now I read another book by them, uh, The Night Hunt this year, uh, or last year, as part of a book TBR, like, professional person picks my reads, and I actually really did enjoy it, and so I picked this up because of that. But I don't know when I'm gonna read this. However, it is a siren mermaid book, and so I really do love mermaids, so I probably will keep this, but I'm gonna put this in the maybe pile, and then we will reassess at the end. Now I've gone, and those were just books that I had on like my, oh, I'm definitely keeping shelves. So now we're gonna go to my red shelf, any books that I've read, and go through that. And then we're finally gonna end at the top, and I'm sure I'm gonna get a lot more books down there, but we already are getting rid of a lot of books. Okay. Next, we're getting rid of books that I have read. And so I'm getting rid of The Girl from the Sea by Nolly Ox Ostertag. I really enjoyed this. I think I gave it a four star. It was super cute, but I'm never going to read it again. And I guess I could keep it on my shelf, but like, I don't know why. It was cute. Like, I'll keep other mangas, but like, I don't feel like I need to keep that one. And then I'm also getting rid of All Good People Here by Ashley Flowers. I really liked this. It had a very ambiguous ending that a lot of people did not F with and a lot of people didn't like it because it was like a John Benet Ramsey like book. Uh, I really liked it and I read through it super quick. I think I gave it five stars. The ending really worked for me but like I don't widely recommend this book because a lot of people I like it has mixed reviews and so like if I'm never going to recommend it then I don't need to hold it and own it so I'll get rid of it. And I'm also getting rid of The Fine Print by Lauren Asher. Not because I didn't love it because I did give it a five star but because I don't own the second and the third books in the series and I'm not going to like just go pick them up when I've already read them just so that I own them all. Like it would just make more sense to not actually have that be a series that I own and so I don't need to own the first book because I only own the first book. And then it's the same situation for King of Wrath. I have read the other two books. I need to read the fourth one on KU. And so this is going to be a series that I just read on KU. I don't need to actually physically own them. I did really love them. I think I've given all the first two five stars and the next one four stars, but like I don't need to own them physically. And then almost the same thing for this. I actually didn't like Twisted Love. I gave it a three star, although really it's more like a 2.5 star. And I do own the second book in the series only because I got it as a birthday gift from my friend Kiana uh, two years ago. And so I don't want to get rid of that book because I don't typically like to get rid of books that friends get me unless it's like a best friend situation. Like I got rid of When the Coffee Gets Cold, but I told Brittany I was getting rid of it because I just didn't want it on my shelves anymore. But I still kept the note from her. But I do like to keep those types of gifts. So I, and I do still want to read it because I heard it's a bodyguard romance and that I would like it. But I don't really want to keep the first one 
I just don't really need it. Of course, I will be getting rid of the Hacienda by Isabella Conos because I didn't like it and I thought that I had unhauled it last time, but I guess I didn't because I had put it in a different location. Didn't really like this book. I'm sure it's a fine book, but it just didn't work for me. I don't need to keep it on my shelves anymore. Same thing with Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. It was just all right. I think it's a good book. I gave it a 3.5 stars, uh, but I'm never gonna like openly recommend it like because I think the mystery really fell flat for me and I'm a little sad about it so it can go. And then I think it's the same situation for Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher because while I bought this and I loved it, I mean didn't love it, I gave it four stars. I really did like it and I do want to le read Love Unwritten. I think that a lot of these books if they are on KU or are I might not actually be on KU. I think it is. If they're on KU or, you know, they're cheap on Kindle, then I'm just going to buy them there because I don't need them taking place on my shelves. Because, like, I'm never wanting to buy the second book. I'm never wanting to spend my money on buying the second book. And so it's like, why do I have the first book if I'm not willing to do that? Well, obviously, we know this book is going to go because I hated this book. I absolutely hated this book, so I'm not keeping it on my shelves anymore. It can go away. It was not a truly incredible reading experience, says Lisa Jewell herself. But I'm not a huge Lisa Jewell fan either, so that makes sense. I found the first book, Things We Never Got Over, and so I already said I was getting rid of that series, but I'm also going to get rid of Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier, and I was keeping all of Jennifer Hillier's books because I really like Jennifer Hillier, and I'm going to keep reading any book that she comes out with. Like, I only have two books of hers left, and then I wanted to do, like, a ranking video originally, but then again, I'm not a really big thriller girly anymore, so I feel like I shouldn't do that on my channel, but this was, like, my least favorite of hers. It just, it was Missing Child Book, which I'm not against, but, like, I don't know. It just... It was kind of boring and predictable, so I didn't love it. And the last one that I'm going to get rid of from my I've already read section is How to Fake It in Hollywood by Ava Wilder. I really liked this when I read it, but I never remember to recommend it in like any type of setting. And I'm just, I don't know. It like I liked it at the time, but like I wouldn't read it again. I don't necessarily care to pick up more books by this author. Like it just kind of was okay when I read it, so getting rid of it. And then I think that's all of the books that I am getting rid of that I actually owned uh, that I've already read. And so now we're going to get to the dreaded stack up there. And I'm sure a lot is going to go away there. All right, this first book I'm a little sad about getting rid of because it was the first like I technically got it as an arc, but it doesn't say it's an arc. So like it was a finished copy. And this is The Curse of Ophidia by Victoria Black. And I did request this. I just didn't like it. And I tried reading it and I couldn't get into it. So I DNF'd it at 30%. And so we're going to get rid of it because I don't really need it on my shelves. And then I found the second book. I still have a bookmark in this, y'all. I got to page 128 out of 584 pages. And I'm really sad that my Barbie bookmark has been in there this whole time. I am Knuff. I've been looking for this. So goodbye to this book. So I got this book I think also from somebody but it was from like a secret Santa and so I don't actually know this person so I don't feel bad about getting rid of it but that is The Shuddering by Anya Allborn. I just have no interest in reading this honestly. I I don't and I haven't heard the greatest things about it. Gabby from Gabby Reads read it said it was all right um so yeah. I do want to read Brother by Anya Allborn, but I don't know. This one just doesn't really do anything for me anymore and then I was interested in reading The Party by Robin Harding but I honestly just don't really care anymore and like it's just perfect for fans of Big Little Lies and like that book was just all write to me and it's a sweet 16 book I don't know I think I'm gonna put it in the maybe pile and decide at the end getting rid of more books we're getting rid of The Change by Kirsten Miller I know it's about three women who discover that midwife brings a whole new type of empowerment I'm pretty sure it's like their feminine time like gives them powers and I just am not really interested in reading this anymore <laughs> And then I'm getting rid of Only If You're Lucky by Stacey Willingham because it's an SMP book and we're still not reading SMP books. So I don't know when I'll ever read this. So I might as well get rid of it. And then the Meaning of the Soulmate Equation because I already talked about it. I don't want to get rid. I just don't care like reading that anymore. And then I'm getting rid of Split Tooth by Tanya Tagok, which I do have a Sprayed Edges edition of this. Like, I don't remember what store I got this from. I just happened to find it. But, like, Books and Lala was talking about it, but then that doesn't mean that I'm going to love it. Like, I, it does have cool drawings in it, but, like, it doesn't ever seem like a book I would actually like. I mean, this says, sometimes we would hide in the closet when the drunks came home from the bar. I'm just like, mmm. And it's, like, very, like, poem-esque. Like, I, I just don't see myself having this be a book that I absolutely love. Uh, oh, it's from an Inuit throat singer who has dazzled and enthralled the world with music it has never heard before. A fierce, tender, heartbreaking story unlike anything you've ever read. I just, no, I just, I just don't see this being a book that I will buy into. Another two books I'm getting rid of is Last Night at the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. I 
have tried to save this before, but I just don't see myself reading this anytime soon. I know it says it was about two women and they fell in love with each other and then Lily asked the question that had taken root in her that was even now unfurling its leaves and demanding to be shown the sun. Have you ever heard of such a thing? So I know that's about two girls that fall in love in 1954, Chinese Americans, and it's not safe for them to be in love. And so it does sound interesting, but I just don't know when I'm ever going to read it. And then I'm also getting rid of Lathan for the Lie by Amy Tintera. I only picked this up because I wanted Middle of the Night by Riley Sager for Book of the Month Club, um, which my Book of the Month uh, bookmark is in there, so I'll take that out. Uh, but I don't have any desire in reading this. I know people have said that it's good, but, like, I, I just don't see myself picking this up. And I do like a good podcast thriller, but I just really don't care. Got my last good stack of books. So here we go. Invisible Monsters by Chuck Palahniuk. I keep hearing that this is, like, the female version of Fight Club, but, like, I just don't see myself ever reading this thing because I've heard questionable things about his books. I'm also getting rid of The Lighthouse Witches by C.J. Cook. It sounds interesting but like I don't see myself picking it up. Same thing for The Last Invitation by Darby Kane. I'm sure it's a wonderful book but I don't want to read it. Then we have Within These Walls by Anya Allborn. I'm I originally thought I was going to be interested in reading her entire backlist but I don't really care. I only want to read Brother. Many Read of Written in the Stars by Alexandra Belfler. I just don't have a desire to read this book anymore. I'm getting Rid of Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. It's literally a historical Japanese literary fiction that I'm never going to read if we're being honest. I'm getting Rid of The People We Keep by Alison Larkin. This is like a literary fiction that honestly the cover is pretty but sounds boring. I'm getting rid of Remarkably by Creatures and yes I know people are going to judge me for that but you know what this is also a book that is not a rainy book and I'm sure that my mom will be very happy to own this. I'm getting rid of Golden Boy by Abigail Tartlin and I don't even remember why I picked up this book. I think it was because of Haley from Haley Fuse but like I don't even really understand what it's about and so I'm just not not gonna read this probably. And then I'm getting rid of Black Cake by Cat Black Cake by Charmaine Wilkerson. I do want to watch the show but like I just don't I just don't feel the need to pick up this book. Like they're all just like literary fiction books that are not my thing. And then I'm getting rid of Purity by Jonathan Branson. I picked this up because of books with Brittany. However, she reads a lot of fantasy. She sometimes reads literary books and I don't really know why I picked this up just because I saw her reading it and she liked it. Like this doesn't even sound like a book that I would like but I still don't necessarily want to get rid of this. So it's gonna go in the maybe pile. And then we have One Italian Summer by Rebecca Searle. We already talked about it. I don't really care for Rebecca Searle. And then another book that's going in the maybe pile is The Power by Naomi Alderman. And like there's something about this book that makes me want to keep it but then I never see myself picking it up so I don't know but I'm definitely getting rid of Beautiful World Where Are You by Sally Rooney. I do not need this book. I will never read it. Getting rid of All the Dangerous Things by Stacey Willingham because I'm not reading S&P books right now and I don't really care for it. I'm getting rid of The Plot by John Hoff Corlitz because I feel like it's just literally Big Fat Liar but I don't really care to read that. And then I'm getting rid of Anxious, Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I like Frederick Bachman. I've read Frederick Bachman books but I the only one that I really want to still read is Bear Town, so I'm just never going to pick this up. And then I'm getting rid of The Ruins by Scott Smith. I don't know why I picked this up because now that I remember I'm pretty sure this is the one that Haley said she ended up throwing up her chicken nuggets too it was that gross and I just don't see myself reading a book like that if we're being honest. Okay the last few I'm getting rid of If I Disappear by Eliza Jane Brazier because I this has a terrible rating on Goodreads and I think I was only going to keep it to do like a read your worst book on your TBR and I don't want to read this. I'm getting rid of Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng because I just I watched the show before I knew it was a book and so like I just don't want to read this. I'm probably getting rid of both The Whisper Man and The Shadows by Alex North because at one point I had the desire to read them but like I've heard they're just kind of all right and so I don't really need just all right thrillers on my shelves anymore. And now if we go back to the maybe pile I have Purity by Jonathan Franzen and I still don't know why I don't want to get rid of this book. I have a feeling that I'm gonna end up not liking this but I keep wanting to hold on to it. So you know what? I'm gonna save it one more time. Uh, I'm going to get rid of The Party though because I'm just never going to read that. I think I'm gonna hold on to Kill the Kingdom. I think I decided I was going to because it does have mermaids and I do like mermaids. So I will keep it for the mermaids. But I am gonna get rid of Book of Gothel because I just don't feel myself going to that. I'm also gonna get rid of In Five Years because I just don't see myself reaching for that. And then I think, I think I'm gonna keep the power. I don't know. I just feel like I could really like this. Plus the first sentence really drew me in. It literally says, where is it? The men lock Roxy in the cupboard when they do it. What they don't know is she's been locked in that cupboard before. I don't know. That interested me. So for that alone, I will keep that book. So I'm going to count how many books are on the floor in front of me and how many books we are unhauling and then we'll be done with the deed. We are getting rid of 70 books friends. 
70 books. That is wild. Now, hopefully, I can fit more books onto my shelves. There are still a lot of books up there, but I did take a lot of books off that shelf. I promise I did. Uh, but those are all still books that I didn't want to get rid of yet. So I'm going to rearrange my shelves, hopefully fit it all in. But just so you can see my lovely stack underneath me, there are all the books that I will be unhauling. And with that, I am going to let you go. I'm going to go unhaul books and maybe I'll do the second half of this vlog being where I actually get some books back and you see what I hauled after I sell them. So let's go for a book haul. I love the way you take it slow You make this light inside me glow I'm back from the bookstore, so I figured I would share what I got. I actually had got, so I got $44 in money or 80 in store credit and so I went with store credit uh, so I got a couple of books and what's funny is as I was leaving it was like seven minutes until the store closed and the woman was like you do know that it's penny a page day right and I'm like oh my gosh I forgot she's like you can get five used books for a penny a page and I went how many used books do I have here and she said only one and I said well it closes in seven minutes I can't do that and she goes I don't care if you take your time and so I rushed and I got two more so I got three for a penny a page. It's been rainy apparently I did not press record uh the second time that my battery I put a new battery in so you missed one book that I hauled. I hauled Cherished by Tracy Wolf, which is the sixth book in like that Crave, like Twilight wannabe series, uh, because that was the only one that I was missing. I got it for like five bucks. So back to regularly scheduled programming. I switched to filming on my phone, which I don't absolutely love, but it's fine. It's fine. We'll survive. Okay. And then I got The Monarchs by Kath Morgan and Daniel Page, because this is the sequel to The Ravens, which is a duology. And I wasn't going to necessarily buy the second one. It was only $4.20. So I figured I could splurge on that. And then this was the steal. So I got the 10th anniversary special edition of The Bone Season by Samantha Shannon, which I've been watching because I have The Bone Season, but I don't have this version. And apparently it's been re-edited and it's like better. And so I've been holding off because it was still like 30, 40 bucks. And so then it was 12.95 because it was on sale. But then because of the used penny a page thing, I paid $5.32 for this. That was the ultimate steal. And then I also got Light Lark by Alex Astor because I've kind of been interested in reading this. I saw Emmy from what Emmy reads like basically rant and rave about it so I figured I'd pick it up and then the last three books that I got I got Guild. I told you I was gonna get this book again. I got Guild, I got Gleam, and I got Glow because I figured I had the money I would just buy them. They didn't have book two which is Glint so then I tried to stop at Barnes and Noble on the way home and they were out so I just don't have book two but then I will have all except for one that is out currently because the fifth one's not out and then this is not one that I actually bought but it came today so I figured I'd just show you uh bookish box I think this was for May I canceled my subscription after May so this is the last bookish box I will get it arrived today so I have Devil in the Deep Blue Sea duology by Stacey Marie Brown and it came in this little shelf it always comes with a sticker for the book and then this is the book which is honestly very beautiful I think this was by the same woman that wrote Savage Lands if I'm thinking correctly but this is the duology and so that is exciting but yeah I have both books here so hopefully it is good it looks like a piratey time which is why I will keep it because I do love good mermaid books and whatnot and it's very pretty but yeah that is my little haul and I only spent three dollars in total because I used all of my store credit and then um because these were full price these were like 18 bucks a pop but I figured I had the money and that store is like good at certain things but it's not always good at the used book section only because like I've combed through it so many times because like I'm a regular there and we don't have very many local bookstores here but yeah that's what I got and then as far as other things as far as like what I'm selling so yeah I they took everything and then there's only three books that I'm putting on Pango currently. I'm putting up this Probably Smut edition of Damaged Goods by LJ Shen. I'm putting up the Dark and Quirky edition of Under the Stars by Laura Pavlov. And then I'm putting up the Illuminate edition of Book of Night by Holly Black. So those will be on my Pango when you see this video tomorrow if you want those. And then my mom took a bunch of books. She took The Shuddering by Anya Allborn within these walls. She wanted my wanted books two and three of the Cinder series, the old covers, because she doesn't have them. She wants book one, two, so I said when I read it, I'll give it to her. And then she wanted the Disney book. She wanted Guild, the book that I just got. She wanted that hardcover edition. And then she also wanted All Good People Here and Listen for the Lie. And so I didn't sell those. I gave those to her. 
but yeah that is my little unhaul slash haul so if you got to the end of this let's put a Mm, I don't know a moon emoji because I'm looking at book of night and it has a moon on it let's put a moon emoji let me know in the comments down below if there's any books that I should have saved that I need to go back and get or if you like any of the books that I got like let me know okay and with that I'll see you guys in a video very soon bye